Part 284A5, line 22, F1, FA, 19A5. Orbital parameters, plane 6, Kepler and, Clip, sorry, Kepler and elements, 5G well setting. There's your alien radio signal, and we've got the graph again. Celestial body, true anomaly, argument of paracis, reference direction, longitude of ascending node, plane of reference, inclination, ascending node, and orbit. So we're still talking about this. If you're looking at this information, you want to look at the first two videos before this one because um, I broke it down into little videos so it's easier to take it in. <clears throat> little bites and pieces. In this diagram, the orbital plane yellow intersects as a reference plane gray. For Earth orbiting at satellites, the reference plane is usually the Earth's equator, equator, <laughs> equatorial plane, sorry, and for satellites in solar orbits, it is the ecliptic plane. The intersection is called the line of nodes, as it connects the center of the mass with the ascending and descending nodes. This plane, together with the vernal point, looks like a ram's head, establishes a reference frame. Wiki quotes, The traditional orbital elements are the six Kepler elements, after Johannes Kepler and his laws of planetary motion. When viewed from an inertial frame, two orbiting bodies trace out distinct trajectories. Each of these trajectories has its focus at the common center of mass. When viewed from the non-inertial frame of one body, only the trajectory of the opposite body is apparent. Kepler elements describe these non-inertial trajectories. An orbit has two sets of Keplerian elements, depending on which body is used as the point of reference. The reference body is called the primary, the other body is called the secondary. The primary is not necessarily more massive than the secondary, and even when the bodies are of equal mass, the orbital elements depend on the choice of the primary. The main two elements that define the shape and size of the ellipse is eccentricity, eccentricity is the shape of the ellipse, describing how flattened it is compared with, an, with a circle not marked in the diagram. Semi-major axis, the sum of the parapsis and apoesis distances divided by two. For circular orbits, the semi-major axis is the distance between the center of the bodies, not the distance of the bodies to the center of the mass. Center of mass, sorry. Two elements define the orientation of the orbital plane in which the ellipse is embedded. Inclination, vertical tilt of the ellipse with respect to the reference plane measured at the sending node where the orbit passes upward through the reference plane, green angle, I, is in diagram. Longitude of the ascending node horizontally orients the ascending node of the ellipse, where the orbit passes through the reference plane with respect to the reference frame's vernal point, green angle, in the diagram. I don't know what that symbol means. It's got something to do with that other thing. And finally, argument of parapsis defines the orientation of the ellipse in which direction it is flattened compared to a circle in the orbital plane as an angle measured from the ascending node to the semi-major axis, a violet angle and diagram. Mean anomaly at epoch defines the position of the orbiting body along the ellipse at a specific time, the epoch. The mean anomaly is a mathematically convenient angle which varies linearly with time which does not correspond to a real geometric angle, it can be converted into, a tr into the true anomaly. There's the V symbol, which does represent the real geometric angle in the plane of the ellipse between parasis, closest approach to the central body in the position of the orbiting object at any given time. Thus, the tr this true anomaly is shown at the re red angle as the red angle. And the V in the diagram and the mean anomaly is not shown. The angles of inclination, longitude of the ascending node, and the argument of parapsis can also be described as the Euler angles defining the orientation of the orbit relative to the reference coordinate system. Note that non-elliptic orbits also exist. If the eccentricity is greater than one, the orbit is hyperbola. Now that's a key word there. I've had hyperbola come up before. If the eccentricity is equal to 1 and the angular momentum is 0, the orbit is radial. If the eccentricity is 1 and there's an angular momentum, the orbit is parabola. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next video.